more on the situation on the ground in Nigeria, I'm now joined by Samson Okwake via Skype from the capital Abuja. He is a researcher with the Institute for Security Studies. Samson, good evening and thank you so much for joining us on the globe. Now, you are on the ground in Nigeria. Take us through what the general mood is like ahead of tomorrow's election. Well, good evening. Um, based on uh, past experience, uh, the general mood um, is one of uh, uncertainty and some level of uh, anxiety, uh, especially considering that the presidential election uh, has been closely contested. Uh, there has been some uh, heated exchanges um, between the candidates. There has been uh, accusations and counter accusations. Uh, now there, there are questions as to what will happen um, in the aftermath of the elections and uh, how would the, the, the losing side uh, respond. Um, so Nigerians uh, uh, generally um, um, a bit on, uh, uncertain and have some um, anxiety uh, going into this election, but at the same time they are hoping that um, they go through this as peacefully as possible. Now, there have been reports of violence in some er areas following the attacks by Boko Haram. What's the security situation like as we speak? Can Nigerians cast their votes freely without fearing for their lives? Um, following the attacks, uh, there are obviously deep concerns about the potential uh, for disruptions of the elections, um, especially in areas where uh, Boko Haram is present uh, in the northeast. Uh, there are also concerns about potential disruptions uh, by political uh, thugs and uh, criminal gangs uh, who obviously offer their services to politicians in, in election periods. Uh, recently, the national uh, security advisor announced that the government had um, uncovered plans uh, by politicians to um, stock up um, arms and also hire thugs to sort of uh, disrupt the, the elections. And so the, the potential for violence is real, um, obviously, but the security uh, agencies led by the police have um, deployed quite uh, a large number of officers around the country. Um, uh, and um, yeah, it remains to be seen uh, what will happen on election day. Uh, but obviously, there, there's some worry about uh, violence. Now, Samson, we've seen losers in other African countries in recent times contesting the elections and uh, resulting in um, seeing candidates going to court and uh, waiting for the court to make final decisions on voting and elections um, that have taken place. What are we likely to see in Nigeria? Are the candidates going to walk away once the results have come through? And uh, are they going to accept the results and uh, take Nigeria forward? Well, uh, the candidates um, have signed uh, peace accords um, in recent days, uh, pledging to accept the outcome of the elections. Uh, of course, it remains to be seen whether this will be honored or not. Uh, in the past, uh, this was the case. Um, candidates indeed signed uh, peace accords, but then we saw that um, you know, in, in, in the in the case of the incumbent, um, he went to court uh, challenging the, the the results. And so, um, these accords have been signed, uh, pledges or commitments have been made. But then, as to whether or not this will be honoured, um, I think it remains to be seen uh, after the elections. Of course, none of the candidates would want to be seen as as being intransigent. Or standing in the way of peace and so um, it should be interesting uh, going forward. Now Samson what kind of changes are we likely to see taking place in Nigeria with uh, whichever leadership or government comes into play and ensuring that uh, the poverty levels in Nigeria are uh, dealt with uh, job creation for the youth and uh, the unemployed and you know dealing with the economic challenges that uh, the most populous uh, nation is uh, facing on the continent what sort of changes should we um, should the Nigerians be looking forward to 
and the people on the African continent? Well, obviously, uh, both candidates have talked about, um, you know, having programs to revive, uh, to to promote economic growth and development. Um, the PDP candidate has talked about private sector-led uh, um, economic growth and development. And so, should he be elected, uh, I think we are likely to see a much more stronger emphasis on the on the, on the private sector. Um, the incumbent, of course, has also uh, emphasized, you know, basically continuing uh, the path that he's been on. But um, also he has been talking about, um, you know, some sort of um, uh, public private uh, partnership. Um, and so on both sides, there has been some emphasis on, uh, you know, private sector led um, economic growth and development. And so I see I see that as being um sort of uh, the way to go in in, in the next uh, four years samson something to look forward to tomorrow elections taking place and uh, all the best for the elections process uh, tomorrow that was uh, samson okwake researcher at the institute for security studies speaking to us from abuja in nigeria